Hello everyone. In continuation of my last lecture, which in which I had started discussing the Maxwell's law of distribution of speed, we had seen that the number of molecules having velocities between u and u plus du, v to v plus dv, and w to w plus dw is given by n f u f v f w d u d w. Here f u is a function of u, f v is a function of v, f w is a function of w. It is not f into u, it is a function of the velocities. We had also seen that u d u plus v d v plus w d w is 0. So, moving forward in continuation of the above, let me define what is the probability density f u f v f w based on the assumptions of the derivation of Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities. The probability density f u f v f w should depend only on the magnitude but not on the direction of c. Therefore, what we get is f u into f v into f w is equal to f c square where f c square is a function of c square. Let us differentiate both sides. We get d f u f v f w is equal to 0. Why 0? Because c square is a constant so its differential has to vanish. Using the product rule to differentiate the above we get f dash u f dash u means differential of f u with respect to u f dash u d u f v f w plus f dash v d v f u f w plus f u f v f dash w d w is equal to 0. Let us divide the above equation by f u f v f w. We then get f dash u divided by f u into d u plus f dash v divided by f v d v plus f dash w divided by f w d w is equal to 0. Again I repeat f dash u means the differential of f u with respect to u, f u means a function of u, f dash v means the differential of f with respect to v and f v means the function of v and so on. Call this equation 3. Let us now multiply the equation 2 by an arbitrary constant beta and add to the equation 3. We get f dash u divided by f u plus beta u into d u plus f dash v divided by f v plus beta v into d v plus f dash w divided by f w plus beta w into d w is equal to 0. Mind you this arbitrary constant beta will be determined later on. Because d u, d v and d w cannot be 0 independently, so we get f dash u divided by f u plus beta u is equal to 0, f dash v divided by f v plus beta v is equal to 0, f dash w divided by f w plus beta w is equal to 0. So, here we see that we are getting 3 independent equations. Let us integrate these equations. We get f dash u divided by f u is equal to beta u minus beta u. Integrating with respect to u, we will get log of f u is equal to minus half beta u square plus log a, where log a is the integration constant. Taking anti-log on both sides, we will get f u is equal to a e minus half beta u square is equal to a e minus b u square. Here, we have replaced beta by 2 by another constant b. 
Now whenever we get the final form, the final form will have the constants a and b so cannot be considered as the final form. Once we determine these constants a and b, only then we can say that we have derived the Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities. So again I have written here b is equal to minus half beta. Similarly, fv is equal to ae minus half beta v square is equal to ae minus bv square and fw is equal to ae minus half beta w square is equal to ae minus bw square. Substituting fu, fv and fw in equation 1 we get dn is equal to n ae minus bu square into ae minus bv square into ae minus bw square du into dv into dw which will give me dn is equal to n a cube e minus b u square plus v square plus w square du dv dw. Now because c square is equal to u square plus v square plus w square we get dn is equal to n a cube e minus b c square du dv dw call this expression 4. Now let us determine these constants. The constant A can be evaluated by using the fact that the total number of molecules is a constant given by n. So we get integral dn is equal to n. Expanding further we get integral dn is equal to n a cube exponential minus b u square plus v square plus w square du dv dw is equal to n. The value of each integral in this expression is pi by b 1 by 2. It means root of pi by b. So substituting the value of each integral we get n a cube into pi by b raised to the power 3 by 2 equal to n or a cube is equal into pi by b raised to the power 3 by 2 equal to 1. This will give me a is equal to b by pi raised to the power 1 by 2. The constant b can also be determined using the relation half mv square is equal to half kt which gives us c square is equal to kt by m or b is equal to m by 2 kt. So a is equal to now m by 2 pi kt raised to the power half. Hence we have determined the constants a and b. a is root of m by 2 pi kt and b is m by 2 kt. Here m is the mass of the gas particle, k is the Boltzmann constant and t is the temperature of the gas. Equation thus 4 thus becomes dn equal to n into m by 2 pi kt raised to the power 3 by 2 exponential minus mc square by 2 kt du dv dw. Call this expression 5. This is one form of the Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities. Now let us explore the other form of Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities. Here I have shown you two spheres having radius c and c plus dc. To explain the figure, let us see why this figure has been drawn. The number of molecules that lies within the box of volume du dv dw whose velocity lies between c to c plus dc is the same as number of molecules within the spherical shell of inner radius c and outer radius c plus dc. It means in the annulus region the number of molecules would be the same as they would be within the box. Hence the volume du dv dw can be replaced by the volume of the shell which is given by 4 pi c square dc. Therefore the equation 5 becomes dn is equal to n into m by 2 pi kt raised to the power 3 by 2 exponential minus mc square pi 2 kt into 4 pi c square dc. So as you can appreciate we have replaced 
du, dv and dw, the product of du, dv, dw by 4 pi c square dc. So, just rearranging the terms we get dn is equal to 4 pi n m by 2 pi kt raised to the power 3 by 2 exponential minus mc square by 2 kt into c square dc. The above equation is called as the Maxwell's equation of distribution of speed which gives us the value of the number of molecules dn having speed lying between c to c plus dc. This is a very very important expression and on the right hand side you can see that dn is proportional to c square. It is also proportional to exponential minus mc square by 2 kt. c square term is an increasing term whereas exponential term is a decreasing term. It means you have two terms on the right hand side one contributing to the increase of particles and the other contributing to the decrease of particles. Now let us explore and discuss the significance of the graph between d and n c. First of all just let me tell you the area under the graph will give me the total number of gas molecules in the system. In the graph how to draw the graph? In the graph the speed of the molecules is marked along the x axis and the number of molecules per unit speed is marked along the y axis. If the graph is larger in a region, the number of molecules moving with the speed corresponding to that particular region would be higher. So this is the graph drawn between the number of molecules versus speed. And as you can see, we are getting a parabolic curve. This parabolic curve is showing that the number of molecules is increasing with respect to speed till a particular speed. After that, it starts decreasing. Mind you, this increase is because of the factor c square and the decrease is because of the exponential factor which has a negative exponent. The figure shows, the following figure will show the speed distribution graph for two different temperatures. As the temperature increases, the peak of the curve is shifted to the right. It implies that the average speed of each molecule will increase. But mind you, the area under each graph would be the same because it represents the total number of gas molecules. So you can see here this is a very interesting graph. The topmost peak is at 100 Kelvin, the bottommost peak is at 1000 Kelvin. These curves are being shown for nitrogen gas. On the y, y axis we have the fraction of molecules that is dn by n. Along the x axis we have the RMS velocity meter per second and we can see that as the temperature is decreasing, the peak is also decreasing, but the width of the curve is increasing. This is a very interesting point because what it actually means? It means why does the width increase when the length of the peak, height of the peak decreases? It is because the area has to be a constant. The area under each curve has to be a constant because the area represents the total number of molecules and the total number of molecules is fixed in the system. It is not varying. The total number of molecules is n. The given graph is asymmetrical. It has a long tail in the high speed area. It means extreme right of the graph. The extreme left of the graph is zero. It means that the molecules of the ideal gas do not have a speed less than zero. It is not possible for the molecules to have a negative speed. Minimum speed is zero. Maximum speed can be infinity. The maximum speed in the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution plot is termed as the most probable speed. For a given temperature, the number of molecules having lower speed increases parabolically but decreases exponentially 
after reaching the most probable speed. The RMS speed, average speed and most probable speed are indicated in the next figure. It can be clearly seen that the RMS speed is greatest among the three. It means RMS speed is more than the average speed and the probable speed. So this is the curve again on the y axis we have the number of molecules along the x axis we have speed and you can see the peak represents the most probable speed then to the right of the most probable speed we have the average speed and to the right of the average speed we have the root mean square speed it means the maximum speed is root mean square speed out of the three and the minimum speed is most probable speed most probable speed is the speed of the maximum number of molecules. Now suppose the temperature of the gas becomes more than the room temperature. It means heating is taking place. Then the average speed of gas molecules in the system will increase and the peak of the graph will shift towards the right end. So this is the explanation why the peak shifts towards the right when the temperature is increased. The area under the graph must be constant at all temperatures. So the height of the graph decreases to maintain its constant area. Again, this explains why the width is increasing when the peak is decreasing. Similarly, we can say that when the temperature of the given gas becomes lower than the room temperature, the average speed of molecules decreases. As a result, the peak of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve shifts towards the left side of the graph. For keeping the total number of molecules in the system, that is, the area under the graph a constant, the height of the graph has to increase. So I hope you have understood and to conclude I can say that the graph becomes narrow when the temperature of the system decreases and it becomes wide when the temperature of the system increases. Area under the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution graph represents the total number of particles in the given system. Therefore, the area of the graph will change with reference to the number of particles changing. Now this was purely a theoretical description of the Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities. This was not enough. How to experimentally verify that the formula given by Maxwell's law to find out the number of molecules having a velocity lying between c and c plus dc is right? How to show that theory is matching with experiment. I will be discussing two very important experiments, Zartman and Coase experiment and the Stern experiment. Both these experiments were performed and the results of the experiment showed that the curve obtained from the Zartman and Coase experiment and the Stern experiment were parabolic in shape and there was very good matching between the experimental results and the theoretical results prompting to conclude that the Maxwell's law of distribution of velocities is verified. Now first of all let us discuss the Zartman and Coase experiment. I will shortly show you the figure. It consists of an oven which contains bismuth vapor at about 800 degrees Celsius. These bismuth vapors escape through a slit and is collimated by another slit a short distance away. A beam of molecules emerges from the slit inside an oven. So here you can see the apparatus. This at the bottom of the apparatus is the oven. Oven has bismuth vapor. Now the vapors escape. They are made to pass through the slit. It means we get a narrow collimated beam of the slit. At the top a drum is shown. This drum is rotating continuously in an anti-clockwise direction and a photographic film or the glass plate is fixed 
at in the drum these gas molecules escaping through the slit will hit the drum and make an impression if they hit at the glass plate if they don't they will not so let me explain up of the second slit is a drum that rotates about a horizontal axis at 6000 rotations per minute at those instants when the slit in the drum faces the bismuth beam a burst of molecules enter the drum these molecules reach the opposite face of the drum where a glass plate is attached at various times depending upon the speeds because the drum is rotating continuously it is turning the faster and slower molecules strike different parts of the plate it means different impressions are left on the plate depending upon the speed of the molecules from the resulting distribution of the deposited bismuth on the plate it is possible to infer that the distribution of speeds in the beam and this distribution agrees with the prediction of maxwell boltzmann statistics we are able to get the parabolic curve exactly the next experiment that i would like to discuss in this defense that the maxwell's law of distribution of velocities is indeed correct theoretically is the stern's experiment in 1947 stern estimen and simpson performed an experiment for verifying the maxwell's law of velocity distribution i will shortly show you the experimental arrangement in the figure the apparatus consists of an open vessel having hot gas with a narrow horizontal orifice so this is the apparatus you can see on the left hand side we have oven in zartman and co's experiment we had used bismuth in this we will be using cesium S1 is the slit used for collimating the emerging molecules and hot tungsten wire is shown on the right and at different places the molecules are striking those different places are represented by d1 and d2 on the bottom right the graph is shown between the number of particles and the speed and you can again see that it is parabolic in nature again verifying that the maxwell's law of distribution of speed the formula given by it is theoretically correct and matches with the experiment cesium is taken as the source of atoms which is heated in the oven a nozzle slit is placed at a distance of 1 meter from it a thin tungsten wire is placed at a distance 1 meter from the slit it serves as a target The entire arrangement is along one strict horizontal line and the entire arrangement is also enclosed in a highly evacuated chamber. The cesium atoms flows out of the oven through the nozzle. In the absence of the gravitational field they would strike the target. However, due to the gravitational field the atoms travel along the parabolic path the atoms emerging from the nozzle with a velocity horizontally along the x axis will not pass through the narrow slit and will not reach the target so we will not get any impression of the molecules the atoms emerging from slit at a small angle and will pass through and strike the target and will be detected The tungsten wire target is heated by an electric current passing through it. When the cesium atoms strike the wire that is the target they get ionized. These positively charged ions leaving the target get into the negatively charged cylinder surrounding the target. Thus an electric current of ions passing through the wire and the cylinder can be measured with accuracy the value of the ionic current will give us the number of atoms hitting the target higher the ionic current higher would be the number of atoms hitting the target moving the target in a vertical direction at different positions 
the ionic current and hence the number of atoms hitting the target is measured at different heights. We find the number of atoms having different velocities. This gives us the distribution of atoms with velocities and again this is in complete agreement with the Maxwell's distribution law of velocities as had shown you in the earlier figure. Again the parabolic distribution was seen and the points matched with the continuous line. So this is as far as the verification of Maxwell's law of distribution of speed is considered. And we have seen how the theory matches with the experiment, how the experiments were able to explain the theoretical expression for the Maxwell's law of distribution of speeds. Now how can this formula be used? That is again very interesting to see. Using this formula, we can find out a number of parameters. We can find out the average speed, we can find out the most probable speed, we can find out the RMS speed and we can also relate all these three to various problems. We can apply them in various cases and we would be able to get many interesting results arising from this particular formula. I will be discussing this, the derivations of the most probable speed, the average speed, the RMS speed in my forthcoming lectures. I hope you have understood what is meant by Maxwell's law of distribution of speed, how it can be used, how it can be experimentally verified, what is the physical significance of this, what are the assumptions behind the derivation and what is the implications of the Maxwell's law of distribution of speed. Thank you so much.